uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote that uh, artists are our modern day prophets. And I wanted to ask the three of you to uh, respond to that notion. Was, uh, was he being hyperbolic? Is it aspirational? And to connect it with this media and with media in general, what can be the role of art and media in teaching and interpreting texts in the 21st century? Does this work as commentary, the way that a text works as commentary? Stuck in this no, 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 we can mix it up. Jeremy, why don't you jump in? Okay, uh, I mean, I think that, you know, Heschel, a man who knew something about prophets, you know, was both interested in them. Uh, is that one up? Is that better? Yeah. Uh, is both interested in prophets as uh, social commentators about the way people lived at that particular point, as well as trying to set sort of blueprints uh, for the future. Uh, and I think that. Uh, people who are artistically uh, engaging in these acts of intertextuality, the way that Esther was talking about, really are doing a very similar thing. They're saying, how do we take these particular texts and invest them with the substance of our own contemporary concerns? Uh, and sometimes at a way which does, I don't want to say violence, but certainly forces us to wrench out our way of thinking about the, these traditional texts. On one level, uh, it is a very large stretch to say that Rachtza has anything to do with uh, fertility and all this. On the other hand, if some artist takes that imaginative leap and makes us begin to remind ourselves and to think about the Haggadah and this time of springtime, right, this Chag Ha'aviv, it's a fertility time, it begins to make sense and remind us of aspects of the holiday that we don't, haven't thought about before. So sometimes prophets who, if you recall in the Bible, often do things that at first sight seem extremely strange, uh, are on reflection, if we give them the credit of thinking of them as prophets and not strangely behaving people, um, really are revelatory. And I think that some of these things, once we meet the artists and the filmmakers halfway and engage with them, uh, really are yielding some intellectual surprises for us. Well, I just wanted to speak a little bit more to the role of media, because that seems to be a world that I, I spend a lot of time in. Um, but I wanted to say something first about prophecy, and you know, I, without, with all due respect to the prophets of our, of our ancient texts, um, the way we understand prophecy is um, either the prophets had a direct line to the divine or were able to see something in human character that other people's were, people weren't able to see at the time. So I think that that's my understanding of prophecy anyway, and especially in a contemporary context where we view people who say that they're having visions of God, they don't say that, oh, they're, they're really, are contemporary prophets, you probably lock them up, you try to medicate them, you try to say, oh, they're just an artist I don't understand. And, you know, not, while not all artists are prophets, for sure, um, I think that it, the commonality between those two worlds of artistry, uh, uh, of art and prophecy is the ability to look at the world and see things that other people aren't seeing. So, I, you know, for me, that was a, a pretty resonant image. Um, but the, in terms of the role of media today, I think that we're at a really important crossroads um, where we're trying to figure out how to incorporate traditional moments and traditional meaning into the, the media that are very much more readily available to us than they were to previous generations. So what, what I've been seeing a lot of, and I do some work in the Jewish innovation sector worldwide, so like I know a lot of people who are involved in actively interpreting through the media that are available to them, uh, Jewish tradition, in a way that doesn't always resonate with with, um, with the parent, their parents or their grandparents, or particularly with institutional Judaism, and I'd use the air quotes if I weren't holding things in both hands. But um, basically, um, it, it's, it, it turns out sometimes to be a little bit of a war between the old and the young, and I don't think that that necessarily has to be the case. Um, but what uh, the Mara piece also illustrated for me was this, this kind of tension between uh, a current generation not necessarily always understanding the things that the previous generation has gone through and why they're doing what they're doing. And again, to just call out Paul's piece, and he talks about something that is hidden. I think that we all in our families have things that are hidden and um, sometimes the intense experiences of being together with our families, which is something that we do a lot of on Pesach if we're 
if we're lucky, um, then sometimes some of those family secrets come out. Um, sometimes you just become more aware that there are things that are buried that you want to uncover, and you don't know where somebody's hidden it. So that's that's part of the I think the the interesting parts of revisiting the same text year year after year and revisiting some of the same people and seeing if you can get them to open up a little bit more year after year. And again, with in, in terms of the media, I think that you know m new media is now is is now more accessible to everybody. It's freer than it ever has been, so the cost point in terms of participating in, in this kind of media is, in, in any kind of medium, is, is significantly lowered. So really, there's, it's kind of sky's the limit, and I just, I, you know, I just, not to be all preachy, but I feel like I want to encourage everybody to just be open-minded to the things that they see out there in the world, because they're, those are, in many, in most cases, incredibly um, rich expressions of people's individual connections to Jewish text and tradition, and um, there's lots out there, which I hope I'll get to tell you a little bit more about later. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think in some ways, uh, I, I would say Heschel is often, as, as he often is, is hyperbolic. But, but I, do, I, I do feel what, what both of you said is, is true, that is that it's clearly not um, the prophet who speaks truth to power, that aspect of prophecy, but the prophet who um, stands somewhat outside society. Uh, and that ability to do that enables the uh, artist slash prophet to um, see differently, um, uh, to uh, perhaps present a more challenging um, vision. And you know the, rabbi, the rabbinic tradition, which is um, concerned about the dangers of prophecy and people claiming to have visions of God, um, which we could probably resonate with in the contemporary world, um, said that prophecy is now given to children. Um, and in a sense, it's the same thing, that as a child has the ability um, to see freshly, to see anew, just as you were talking about, when you have the Seder for the 15th time or the whatever number of times, how do you come to it in a fresh way? And I, I, in some ways, I think the challenge for an artist is um, to bring that personal vision, but to have a personal vision that also uh, resonates or evokes a response in other people. Uh, if it's only just personal, it's only like my story, then I don't think it's successful as whether it's a video or art. Um, but it really is that ability to, uh, uh, to challenge us, to shock us, um, to make us notice um, things that we haven't really seen before. Uh, and in that sense, um, artists do have that um, uh, capability, like the prophets of old, is to see somewhat differently. And in that vision, they enlarge our own visions. 